Not sure how to make a color wheel with acrylics? By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to make your super simple color wheel, and you'll also know exactly which paint colors to choose to get super vibrant colors every single time. For all the best lessons on painting with vibrant color with acrylics, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you get notified every time I put up a new video so you don't miss a thing. If you've never made a color wheel before, or if you've found that the color wheels you can get at the art store feel a little too complicated, this simple color wheel is all you need. I've helped hundreds of brand new painters create this color wheel to get started painting with vibrant color, and now it's your turn. Okay, so to make our color wheel, we only need a couple of things. So what I have is some palette paper here. You can use whatever type of palette you want. I've got some heavy watercolor paper. It's just important that the paper is thick so it doesn't tear. And then we've got a pencil, small paintbrush, paper towel, a little cup of water, and then most importantly, our colors. So the colors we're gonna use for this color wheel are quinacridone magenta. I'll explain why this is super important in a minute. We've got our Hansa Yellow Medium. Any yellow will work, but this is the one that I like. And then Phthalo Blue as well. This happens to be the green shade. Any Phthalo Blue is fine. And then some Payne's Gray and some white. This is in place of black, and I'll explain all of this in just a little bit. So the first thing we'll do before we even get any paint on the palette is we need to draw our color wheel. So don't worry if you're not super good at drawing circles, just really simple, doesn't have to be perfect. Just draw yourself a circle there, and then another circle in the middle, and then we're gonna divide this color wheel into 12 different segments. So we can divide in half this way, in half vertically, and then each of these segments of four gets divided into three. So just one, two, one, two, three, same thing here. Not worried about making this perfect. That is not the point of this video. Okay, so we've got this. Now we're going to label it before we fill it in. So we're gonna start with magenta up top. Again, I'm gonna explain why we're using magenta instead of red in just a second. So we'll go magenta, then magenta orange, orange, yellow orange, yellow, yellow green, green, blue green, blue, blue violet, violet, and magenta violet. Okay, so now We've got space for our primary colors, our secondary colors, and our tertiary colors, like the magenta orange, yellow orange, all the hyphenated colors, those are tertiaries. So that's it for the pencil. And now we're gonna pull in our colors. So what I like to do for my color wheel to make it super, super vibrant, which is why you're here, is to use quinacridone magenta instead of red. So this is like the power color when it comes to making super vibrant color mixtures, when you're making oranges and purples, this is going to be your friend and you're gonna see why in just a second. So that'll be number one. And then of course I showed you the yellow and the blue. So these are our primary colors, just substituting magenta instead of red. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all three on our palette. And we wanna make sure that there's enough space in between the three of them. Don't put them right on top of each other. We need space to mix them. So just a little bit, don't need too much. And you can get my full list of recommended colors underneath this video, but these are the only three colors we need for the color wheel. So you know this from you know elementary school art class. We've got our primary colors and you can mix all the other colors from that. So, got our colors back up here. All you need is one paintbrush. Mine's pretty small. This is a Princeton Summit brush, in case you're wondering. Some of my favorites. So, the first thing we're gonna do is just fill in the primary color. So you can do this however you want, in whatever order. I like to go in order of the wheel. Again, don't worry about staying too much in the lines. It's not about how it looks. 
it's about having a reference for when you're painting so you know what colors mix well together. So to get magenta orange, I'm going to take a little bit of magenta, add a little bit of yellow to it. There's no right or wrong way to do this. The only goal is to have the colors that are next to each other just look different from each other so you can tell them apart. So that's our magenta orange right there in the middle. And I just love to go all the way around. You could do the three primaries first, whatever you want to do. This is the way that I like to go. So now we've got that beautiful magenta orange, nice and bright. Now we want to go orange. So we'll just add some yellow to this and just get a nice orange. It's not too light, not too dark. The only goal is to make it look different from the magenta orange, which we've done. So the reason a color wheel is super important and it's typically the first thing you'll do in an art class is because it introduces you to how the different colors work and the different mixtures you can get when you blend colors. It's super simple, but so important. And now we'll go to the yellow orange. So taking some yellow, just taking a little bit of the orange and you don't even need to wash the brush between these steps because the colors go nicely together and they mix well. And we're only working with two colors right now. Anyway, we wouldn't add blue into this. We'd start to get a muddy green. We don't want that. So there's our yellow orange. And now we will wash our brush off so that we can do our yellow but we're pretty quickly making our way around the color wheel. Let's just wash it off, get it nice and dry, and then we'll go right in for some yellow. What I love about the golden colors is they are really transparent, which is a good thing, good thing for color mixing. And the pigment is just really pure and really strong, which I love. It's definitely worth investing in higher quality colors. Your colors will be more vibrant and you'll be able to mix colors you wouldn't otherwise be able to mix with lower quality paint. So now we're gonna go into the yellow green, take a little bit of the yellow, take a touch of the blue. Phthalo blue is really high tinting, which means a tiny bit goes a really long way. And we do want this to feel yellow green. So I might've gone a little too dark. But that's okay. Add a little more yellow. Put this in right here. And you can see how vibrant that green is just from those two colors. I get asked a lot how to mix the perfect green. And honestly, it starts with having really high quality colors when you even before you mix. Promise it's worth investing in those higher quality colors. So We've got that yellow green, now we'll add a touch more blue. And we'll use this darker version as our green right here. It's important that when you're color mixing, you mix slowly. I see a lot of my students like scooping a bunch of paint and putting it in. That can be hard to like fix color mixing mistakes. When you go slowly, you have a little bit more control over your colors. And you can add like a touch more if you need it. So always mix slowly. Okay, so now we'll do blue green. We can just add even more blue to this blue green here. Just make it a little darker. Got a nice darker blue green. And keep in mind too, you can make different color wheels with different primary colors. So if we used a different blue, our blue green might have come out different. If we used a different yellow, we could have different oranges. So feel free to experiment. These are just my favorite colors for getting super bright mixtures and vibrant mixtures, which is what I'm all about. So wash the brush off again. It's important to just get all the paint off. The more colors you start mixing at one time, the muddier your colors will get. So I'll talk more about that in a different video, but 
it's important to keep your brushes clean, especially when color mixing. So now I'll go with blue. Just some blue over here. Phthalo blues are really, really pretty. Blue. Now I'll do blue violet by adding a touch of magenta. And these colors are going to look similar, but you can differentiate them by adding a little more magenta. Alright, and then we'll go into our violet by adding even more magenta. Magenta is key here. If you are using a cadmium red or any other kind of red, you're not going to be able to get the same violets as if you were using magenta. And I'm going to do a whole other video on mixing the perfect purple, so I'll show you what that looks like in that video to mix with different reds. So now we've got magenta violet, which just means having more magenta than the violet. So I'm just taking the rest of our magenta over here. Subtle difference, but you can definitely see the difference here. Okay. And now we've got our beautiful color wheel. So now you know which beautiful primary colors mix to create a super vibrant looking color wheel. So before we go, I just want to show you one other thing. If you want to lighten and darken these colors of the color wheel, these colors are going to be your best friend. So first is titanium white, just your average white. It's nice and opaque. And then Payne's gray. So Payne's gray deserves its whole own video, but basically it's a great alternative to black. It's made of some really nice deep dark blue and black. I know that by flipping it over, you can see the pigments right here, ultramarine blue, some black. So it's just a deep, 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 deep bluish black color, a little less flat than a regular black. So I'll just put down a little bit here. And I just wanna show you a couple of examples of lightening and darkening of colors. We'll take the white, make sure we're using a clean brush to get some of the white out over here. Let's say we want to lighten up our yellow orange. Just add a little bit of white. And you can go all the way around the color wheel making different variations. We can do a little bit of white in the orange as well, or the uh, magenta orange. Let's see what that looks like. It's okay that there was a little yellow on the brush since there was yellow in the mixture. You can make a color wheel with a third, a second or third ring on it if you want to, but it's just fun to play around and see if you want to go one step further with your color wheel, how white and black affect the color mixes. So here's another one, magenta violet. Maybe even we'll add some to the blue violet. It's more violet violet. So you see where I'm going with this. You can do the whole thing. You can test this out as well. And then let's look at what it looks like to take the colors a little bit darker. You could take a little bit of Payne's Gray. You can add that to our blue over here. Make a nice deep, deep dark blue. You could take it and darken the green as well. And you can do this to all the different colors. Just wanted to give you a little taste of how to lighten and darken your colors, but we'll go into some more color mixing in a different video. So I think this was our blue green, but you see where I'm going with this. All right, so make your own color wheel. 
practice. And if you want to download my full list of materials, that is below this video. So now you know how to create a simple color wheel, but you're probably wondering what other paints I use to get such vibrant colors in my paintings. I've created a quick start guide to painting with vibrant color so you know exactly what you need to get started. Download the guide with the link below this video. Also, if you want to join a community of color-loving painters just like you, I have a Facebook group where acrylic painters can share their work and connect with each other. So join the Painting with Vibrant Color Facebook group with the link below. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe and share it with your color-loving friends. Also, comment below and tell me what your biggest takeaway from this video was. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.